Hi there. Uh, today we're going to talk about Natron, which is an open source compositing program. Um, the reason I've picked this to talk about and kind of give this introduction to node-based compositing with is it being open source means you can use it for commercial projects. Um, and also its interface is very, very closely related to that of Nuke, uh, which is an industry standard compositing software at the moment. So uh, without having to shell out the big bucks to use it on commercial projects, you can kind of get started with this. And as you feel you need maybe more features or more advanced features, uh, switch over to Nuke in the future. But if you just want to try something out, then Natron is definitely a really good place to start. Um, I'm actually on the Natron website where you can download it for free. Uh, so the link for that would be natron.inria.fr. And here at the top is where you can download it. Um, today's example is going to be more of a practical example. So I'll also have a few renders with you that, I, uh, that I'll share. So you can follow along if you want to. Um, but this is just basically intended as a guide to kind of get into the software, see what it looks like, and... Um, and get a feel for what node-based compositing is like and maybe how it could benefit you. So without any further ado, I suggest we get into Natron itself. So here we are in um, Natron and if you've used maybe things like After Effects before, um, this might look a little little funky. So the way node-based compositors work is you have basically three main uh, workspaces. The first one would be here, would be the viewer. So this is where all the action is going to happen. This is where you're going to see your preview um, of everything that you're changing. Then down here, we're going to have our node graph. The node graph is the place where you're going to input all your nodes. So this is where you're going to load in all your images and apply all the different effects and mix them together and blend them together, things like that. Um, and the final part, which says project settings right here on startup, uh, is your properties panel, which is going to have the properties of each active node. Now, if this, isn't, this doesn't make any sense yet, that's okay. Um, I'm going to do this step by step. We'll get into it. We'll talk about some interesting shortcuts and some little things that you might want to know. Uh, especially when you're starting out, to make your life a little easier. So the first thing we're going to do is actually bring in our footage. Um, if I go to File, for example, you'll see that I don't really have an import uh, file anywhere. So rather than trying to get it in, um, get it into your project in like more a traditional way, I guess um, the way things are done is everything is done here in the Node Graph, where you're gonna um, add different nodes and those nodes are kind of defining what you're going to be doing so you have different types of nodes if we look into this first little um, tab here these are all the different sections with all the different nodes we'll get into the basic ones uh, but the first section here which has like two arrows one coming in and one going out is basically your input and output nodes so this is where everything that has to do with bringing in footage and viewing footage and um, rendering out footage and things like that uh, will be kind of, yeah, they'll be in this section, basically. Uh, so the first two things we see is a read and a write node. So the read node is going to be your primary node to bring in footage. Um, there's really no other way to do this rather than with a read node. Uh, there are special ones here in Natron, but for now you can just focus on the read node. This will read pretty much anything, uh, whether it be image sequences, movies, different types of things. Um, I generally work with image sequences. The uh, file supplied will also be EXRs. Um, so this is what we're going to be using for our example. But it's good to know that if you ever run into trouble, there are other options as well. So if I click this read node, you'll see the first thing that happens is we open up a window which asks us to open a sequence. So like most kind of high-end compositors, this is really geared towards using image sequences, especially in, uh, coming from CG. You'll be using things like EXR sequences. So let's bring in one. Um, of course, you can always use stills as well, which we'll, we'll be doing, but same method really applies to sequences. So we'll bring in one of the renders that I have supplied. So actually, let's bring in the direct pass right here. So before I get into everything here, I'm going to show you really quick what these um, passes look like, actually. I have this folder right here. Uh, let's open all of these 
into Photoshop. And say alpha channel, alpha channel, because we want to see the entire pass. We don't want to bake in the alpha in Photoshop just yet. There we are. So I have a bunch of different passes. Uh, this is an emission pass. This is the direct lighting pass. This is a volumetrics pass. This is a reflection pass. And this would be the indirect pass. So we're going to take these five passes, mix them together in Natron and see what happens. But I just wanted you to see what they look like before we um, go back to Natron. So you get an idea of what we're going to do. So it's essentially just a planet um, that we're going to bring together uh, with a few passes that I rendered out. So when we go back to Natron, um, the first thing you'll see is I've brought in this footage and there's still nothing appearing in the viewer. Well, if we look closely in the node graph, there's actually two nodes here. The first one is our read uh, read node, which, we, which we're trying to bring in our footage with. And the second one is called viewer one. This is a standard node, which will be in every um, project that you start. It's in there by default, because if you look at here, it's called viewer one. If you look at this tab, it's called viewer one as well. So basically what's happening is that this, um, I guess this panel right here is the visual representation of anything that ends up being connected to this. So if we connect this uh, read node to viewer one, you'll see what happens is we'll actually get our image to show up. So this is, a, I guess, the first lesson into how uh, node-based compositing works. Whenever you want to see your final result, you have to make sure that whatever chain of nodes you're making, uh, doesn't matter how simple or how complex, always end in a viewer. Now, why do I say a viewer? You can have more than one viewer. Um, let's say we've got one here. So if we go back to the input and output section, we have, for example, viewer two. If we would bring in a second, um, a second image, then uh, we could stick it into the second viewer and we can switch between them in these panels. So just to demo this, uh, instead of going back to read every single time, you'll see read has a little R next to it right here. Um, that is also the shortcut for it. So whenever you're in the node graph and it's active, I'm going to press the R key and it will allow me to uh, read in the second bit of footage. So I'm going to go back to the same, same folder and bring in the second one. So again, viewer two is still empty because we haven't connected these two up. So having connected these two, we have two different nodes in two different viewers. Now, obviously, this isn't a super practical way of doing things. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you can have more than one tab with a bunch of different viewers outputting a bunch of different things. So for now, I'm going to delete this second viewer just by hitting the delete key after selecting it. And I'm going to bring in the rest of my footage. So I'll just repeat. I hit R, then going into the directory, double clicking it. And there is the indirect pass. Now, how can we switch quickly between looking at these three different things? Um, we can drag this little line going into the viewer to the three different passes and then switch between them accordingly if we want to. Or if we hit um, one on our numpad with a, a node selected, so each viewer has a number assigned to it, uh, this one, viewer one, has automatically has number one on your number pad assigned. So let's say I hit this read node and I hit one. I can switch to it, switch to this one, switch to this one. Um, and as you can probably tell already, knowing a couple of basic shortcuts really, really makes your life a lot easier and allows you to composite a lot quicker as well. So knowing this, we can switch between them easily. And rather than hitting R again and bringing in a read node again, I wanted to show you a third way of bringing in footage. And that is if we go to our Windows Explorer, the first three we have brought in already. I've got this little stars background as well, uh, which is very, very basic, which I want to bring in as well. But rather than hitting R every time and bringing them in separately, what we can do as well is just drag them into our node graph. And as you'll see, they'll appear right here. So we have all our different passes now. Um, and they're there. So we're actually ready to start compositing. All right, so the next step is going to 
be figuring out how to make these nodes interact with each other. So again, just hitting one. As you can see, I've got all, the, all these different passes and I wanna bring them all together to have one end result. Um, in this part of the tutorial, I'm assuming you've worked with passes before with different passes. Um, if you don't know yet, uh, I would highly recommend looking that up. There's a bunch of great tutorials. Uh, there isn't a single one I can really recommend, but um, if you just look for um, rendering and passes and compositing and passes, there's a lot of stuff you can look at. Uh, so maybe you want to pause it and have a quick look at how that works. But um, I'm assuming this is for people maybe coming from After Effects who haven't done really much node-based compositing or looking to get into it. Um, yeah, so if you're not 100% sure how passes work, I would definitely recommend looking that up first. Um, but without further ado, let's get into compositing all these passes. So if you have done it before, um, you'll know that when you go into After Effects, uh, you'll want to set up your project the right way. And also you'll want to, um, I guess, make sure you've got all the different blending modes set up correctly. So in After Effects, what you'd be doing is if you got all these different layers, you'd put them on top of each other and set the blending modes to add, and they would all add up to your final image. Uh, and then from there on, you could start compositing as much as you want. Now in Nature, and it works, even though it's the same principle that applies, um, it works slightly differently. So for every operation we're going to do, we're going to use different nodes. So, so far we've just touched on these first ones. Um, and as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of different categories and a hell of a lot of different nodes. So rather than going uh, over them one by one, the reason I want to do this practical example is just to give you an idea of how to do uh, some very basic operations rather than give you the super long winded um, I guess, introduction without being able to follow along. Uh, I guess practice makes perfect. Um, and this is a really good way to just have a look at it. So you might see me going to this merge node instinctively. So we're going to skip over the these two um, categories for now because the first one we really want to touch on is the merge node. So the merge node, if I just hit it, uh, is, I guess, the most... Uh, versatile node of all, well, maybe not versatile, but the mo the node you'll be using most of all. So this is the way to, I guess, multiply two images together um, in different ways. Uh, multiply, I guess, mix. Um, so you've got all the different blending modes in there as well. Uh, so let's have a look at how to bring those together. Now, if I zoom in, just uh, scrolling with my scroll wheel here, you can see that the merge node has different inputs. So the read node just has one output. It's this one little, um, I guess, one little arrow sticking out. Well, if we hit the merge node, you can see there's an A and a B coming in, which makes sense because you'd want um, one image coming in one input and one image coming in the other input. And then you're going to tell the read node how exactly to uh, mix those two images. So a really nice trick to, uh, I guess, remember how this works is... A is the image you'll be mixing in or adding on top, um, so to speak, and B is your background. So this is the image that you'd want to pipe in um, as your background, and then the image that is coming in on top that is being added on top, you'd want to yeah, uh, put in your A channel. So A add B background. Um, it's a really easy, quick and I guess quick and easy way to remember it. So what are we going to do now? Now let's have a look at our passes first. So I've got a direct pass here, which I'm I'm going to name. Um, how do you get to these properties that I haven't actually explained yet is every time you double click on a node, let's say we double click on the merge node, you'll see the controls for the merge node um, being added on top. If we go back to this read node, you'll see this is the reflection pass, which you can see by the... Um, by the file name here. If I double click here, you'll see things switch around. This would be the volumetrics pass and you can keep going and going and going. Um, there's a little indicator here that says how many of these nodes you want to have open at any time. Um, 10 is the standard. If you only want one, you can set it to one. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I usually leave it at the default of 10. Um, it doesn't really bother me. But uh, it's good to know that whenever you double click on a node, your uh, controls will be added on top. But 
the other nodes that you the previously used ones will be um, just kind of appended on the bottom. So you've always kind of got your con different layers or different nodes accessible pretty quickly. So if there's two or three different nodes, let's say you're color correcting something and then merging it in, you can have your color correction and your merge kind of on the same screen, which is a really quick way of working um, compared to say After Effects where you would have to select each layer separately, then tweak the effects and select the other layer, tweak the effects, select the other layer, tweak the effect. Well, here you can do it on multiple nodes in instantaneously. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at our merge node. Uh, so these are some basic controls for the merge node. But what I want to do first is name my nodes. So I have a clear indication of what's doing what. So actually, I'm going to put these in caps. Volume indirect so before we start compositing uh, the background and let's just get our beauty pass up to speed um, so I'm going to disconnect the viewer right here I'm going to start with kind of adding our indirect and our direct lighting um, I like to work in a certain order. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, I guess it's just force of habit. So if you're used to multiplying these passes, or I guess mixing these passes in a different order, that'll work as well uh, most of the time. This is kind of like how I like working. Um, for this project, for example, let's say the direct and indirect light, that's mainly the planet. Then we have the reflections on top. Um, after that, we have the clouds. And then after that, we have the atmosphere um, in kind of their respective passes. So for me, this kind of makes sense in my head. Um, but yeah, if you do it differently, if you like to mix the reflect pass with the direct before mixing the indirect and things like that, you can do that. You know, um, This is just my way of working. So how are we going to mix these two? Well, before I'm going to start mixing them, I'm actually going to connect my viewer to my merge node, which means even though this is black, we'll actually have the output of what is coming out of the merge node. So our direct pass was going to be our background. So we're going to pipe that into B first. And our indirect pass is going to be the thing we're going to add. So we're going to add that into the A. And the first thing you'll notice is that we're only really seeing the indirect pass. So let me make this a little bigger. So what's going on? Um, we have to actually change our blending mode. So how do we get into changing our blending mode? Again, if the merge node controls aren't up yet, we double click them and they'll appear here at the top. Um, if we look at the controls, first thing we're going to look at really is the operation. So operation is going to be what the kind of blending mode is we're going to use, um, let's say coming from After Effects. Um, and first thing you'll notice is we're going to have to add these over each other. And uh, add isn't actually available here. This is because in um, this framework, I guess, uh, both in Natron and Nuke, it isn't called add, but it's actually called plus. So if we hit plus, we can see that the two passes are being added. So if I hit one again, I can see my direct pass. Hit one again, I can see my indirect pass. And if I hit one again with the merge selected, I can see the, um, the result of adding those two together. Now, obviously, there wasn't much to see in the indirect pass, so we won't see that much of a difference. So we'll have to start adding in um, all the other passes as well. Now, how is this going to work? Same method, but again, rather than going to the merge node over here, the uh, unfortunately, the shortcut doesn't show up here, but it's the same in Nuke as well. The merge node is M as a shortcut, so if we hit M, we'll get a new merge node and uh, it'll appear. Now, why do I need a new merge node? We're going to uh, apply the same process. The only difference is our background is actually going to be the output of the first merge node. So we're going to say, OK, so these two have been merged together now, and this is the new node. So actually, you want to look at this as these two have been separated out, but this is the end result. So we want to pipe this end result into the background and then add this reflection pass on top as well. But before, obviously, before we can see something happening, again, we're going to have to connect the viewer here or hit one, which is going to do the same thing for us. 
Again, one on the number pad. So again, we notice the same thing happening. Uh, we still have to set our blending mode. So we're gonna double click the merge two node and set this to plus. And now we can start to see things happening. So if we go back to the uh, first merge node and hit one again, you'll see this is the direct and indirect mixed together. And if we hit one on this one again, we'll see the reflections being added in as well. So um, what do we need to do now for the next, uh, the next one? Again, same thing. So I'm going to click outside so I don't have anything selected. Hit M again. Add this new merge node, which we've created with everything in there, uh, in our background. Add the volume on top. And again, if we hit one on it, we'll see that the only the volume pass is showing up. Why? Rinse and repeat. I have to set this to plus. And uh, we see our volumetrics being added on top as well. Now for our last one, same workflow. So I'm going to hit M again. Add the background. Add it on top. Hit one with it selected. And again, we see that we still need to change our blending mode to plus, and there we are. So if we look at the first one, this is where we started with one pass. After adding all of these in, we have all the different passes selected. So this is with our beauty pass sorted out. So what happens if we want to add in a background? Because so far we've only looked at um, adding all of these passes together. Uh, and I've got my stars layer here as well, uh, which I want to kind of add in the background and Let's have a look at what happens here. So what we need to do is basically add another merge node in front of our direct, um, but add this in in a different way. So if I had a merge node here, basically what's happening is that our stars are going to be our background, and we're going to add in our direct pass. And if we look at this, if we leave the uh, merge node set to over, it's basically the same thing as in Photoshop or in um, After Effects, just putting one layer above another. Um, they're gonna use the alpha channels automatically to add these on top. The only thing we need to do now is if we go back to this merge and look at it, we still haven't got our background. Why? Because we have our background still selected to the direct pass rather than the result of these two. So if I throw that in there, there's our stars and we get a nice little result. So. This is a very, very basic setup. Um, I guess this is the process you'll be doing almost every single time um, when you're getting into, um, when, when you're bringing in all your passes and mixing them together. Um, you might have noticed there's like a reflection, pa uh, refraction pass and maybe a translucency pass left out. Uh, the reason they're not in here is because they just weren't necessary for the project. There wasn't any refraction or translucency going on in this render, so I wasn't going to add them. Um, and clutter it up when they're just empty passes, essentially. But you do the same thing. It'll just be a longer chain. So I haven't actually um, had a look at what I can pull out of this render. Um, the reason for that is I kind of wanted to do a quick, um, I guess, well, not really quick, but I, I kind of want to give you insight in, in how I do some basic things. Um, and if I mess up in the process, which, you know, sometimes happens when you're when you're working, you misclick or whatever. Um, if something does happen, you kind of get a look at how to troubleshoot things maybe as well. So uh, I try to do this as organically as possible. So you don't get this really pre-chewed tutorial. You just kind of see what's going on. And I explain what I'm doing as I go along. So looking at this image right here, uh, first thing I want to do is kind of brighten it up a little bit. I feel that maybe the clouds could be a little brighter. Um, I feel that the halo might be a little, could be a little brighter as well. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So because we have all our passes separated here and uh, nicely laid out. What we can do is add individual nodes to the connection between the different passes. So let's see, I want to start with this halo and maybe brighten it up a little bit, blur it out so it gets a little bigger, things like that. So what we're going to do is with our emission selected, let's go and have a look at all the different nodes we can uh, use when it comes to color correction. So you might, uh, when we look at this section over here, the second section, which is called color, I guess it makes sense. Um, there's a couple of little uh, tools we can use here as well. You might be tempted to jump into the color correct, which is, you know, 
a, quite a nice note. It's got a, a fair bit of control. Um, you can use this for all kinds of different things. But as you can see, if we open up all these different ones, uh, it might be a bit much for some basic usages. So I usually, um, if it's just for easy, quick and easy color correction, I don't really tend to use the color correct a lot. Um, and by color correction, I guess I don't mean color correction, like brightening things up. Uh, I usually tend to go with the grade node. So if we go back to the color, um, you can have a look. There's a grade here as well. If I select my emission, so with this selected, if we hit grade, it'll pop in between and the uh, controls will open up by themselves. So what's nice about this is kind of a really quick way to get your footage sorted out. I guess it's a force of habit, habit. Like I said, you could use a color correct if you want, if you prefer that interface. I'm just use, used to using the grade node. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I guess I'm just using used to using this interface. So first thing I'm going to do is we've got a bunch of different controls. Uh, I tend to use the multiply a lot. So with our grade node in between our emission and our merge, what we're going to be doing is we're actually affecting um, the output of this pass before it gets merged in with everything else. So if we just zoom in a little bit, um, you can see if I bring up my multiply here, it'll actually get a lot brighter. So we can really enhance the halo effect. So that's a, it's a very, very quick way of doing that. Maybe it's a bit much, but I also would like to uh, blur this out a little bit more. So Rather than going to look for different things every single time, we have in our where are we? filter um, filter section, sorry, I don't know what these sections uh, off by heart. I usually use a lot of shortcuts. We have a bunch of different blurs. So the blur C image is the one I'd want to use. Um, but there's another quick way of accessing these things. So we've talked about using M for the merge, um, using one to connect the viewer. But if we hit the tab key, with our node selected where we want to add a node after, you'll see that we get a chance to type. So if I type blur here, you'll actually get the blur C image filter in here right now. Now I have two for some reason. I think uh, I suspect that has something to do with the fact that I have a different version of Natron um, installed side by side. So if you're only seeing one, that's normal. Just click the regular blur or hit enter if you select the one that you want. And it, again, it shows up in between and we can start messing with the controls. So after I've graded this, I want to blur it out. So let's say I just go overboard and get a really, really big atmosphere. That might be a bit much, but it's just to show you what you can do. Again, a lot of these spinners aren't limited by um, the, the slider next to them. If you set it to 200, for example, you'll get a blur that's uh, 200 pixels large. So you can type in higher values than uh, than they're available in the spinner as well for a lot of these. So I don't want to blur it out too much, just a little bit, so it gets a little bit softer. There we go. Um, again, I don't have an end result in mind. I'm just messing around with the render that I made uh, to show you the, I guess, a kind of a natural way, uh, my natural way of how I use this kind of software. So with that blurred out, that's starting to look a little better. Um, maybe I'd like the direct pass if we hit one again. It is a little dark. I mean, if this is the sunlight shining on it, uh, I guess the desert will look maybe a lot more, um, a lot brighter as well. So again, with our viewers set to the merge, so hitting one again on the last merge node, so we can see our final result. I'm going to add another grade node, and I've talked about tab, um, so I could type grade, or if I wanted to, I'm going to, if you deselect any nodes and then hit the G key, for example, is also the shortcut for grade. I'm going to throw it in here so you can see it separately. So I'm going to hit G again. Again, another really nice shortcut to have. So um, we've got R for the read node, G for the grade node, and M for the merge node. So with those three, you can get pretty far very quickly. Um, but again, here's our grade node. Um, maybe bring the gamma down a little bit to darken the shadow over here uh, and bring up the multiply. Now, unfortunately, the clouds are also kind of in the um, direct pass, as you've seen. So there's a there's two separate passes. There's like the, the volumetrics and the direct pass as well, because the material I used wasn't 100% volumetrics. Um, but yeah, that's just another way of uh, I guess that's just the way I set it up. I'll put it that way. So that's why some of the clouds are brightening up as well. So again, um, I use multiply quite a lot to just kind of boost 
whatever it is I need to boost. Um, and we see that our even though our clouds came up a little bit, that's actually quite nice. But we have a slightly brighter result here as well, which is nice as well. So what else can we do? Let's say uh, with our reflection class selected, hit the G key again, see what happens. Maybe we multiply this. Maybe the reflection is a bit much. Bring the gamma down to kind of soften the highlight a little bit. Again, this is playing around, seeing what happens. Um, I'm pretty happy with the result I have right now, but there's something that is bugging me, and that's the fact that if the sun is on this side of the planet, well, everything in here should be dark. Now, normally you can sort this out in 3ds Max by rendering it uh, in a certain way, but I kind of wanted to use this example to see how we can uh, apply mask sort color correction um, and just have a really quick look at generating some some basic like ramps and things like that as well. So what I basically want to do is I want to have like a ramp that goes maybe from black to about here to white here to use as a mask to color correct everything together down. So um, rather than co color correcting each pass individually, I'm going to color correct everything. So what am I going to do? I'm actually going to hit uh, select this last. Uh, so yeah, select this last merge node and then hit the G key again for a grade node. And you'll see that everything's piped in this way. All the arrows are going that way, going that way, going that way. And then finally, they get piped into the grade node. So everything that is happening within, I guess, this space right here, all comes down to the final merge node. And then it's only one pipe going downwards. So whenever I'm compiling things, I like to kind of work um, going sideways. And then from there on, whenever you bring things in or add extra things, have like their own little space and then bring them in and just keep going downwards. Um, that way, you know that whenever you have something set to the side or whatever, you'll know that it's a separate thing that you're bringing into your chain and um, kind of compositing in, in a different way. So with this grade node that I just brought in, if I bring down a multiply, for example, which is um, what I'm going to use to um, darken the middle part here, uh, you can see that it's still being affected by everything. Again, bring it up, bring it down. I'm going to set it back to 1 for now. Not 0.1, but 1. Um, and you can see that's affecting everything. So it's a good to know that your, um, I guess your footage flows a certain way and to keep that in mind whenever you're working. So when we look closer at this grade node, I'm just gonna single it out here. You'll see we have a little mask tab. So what we can do is bring in a different node and uh, add that as a mask for our grade. So rather than, um, you know, making a uh, radial gradient in Photoshop, saving it out and bringing it in. There is a tool to make um, gradients, uh, sorry, I guess radial gradients in um, in Natron as well. Uh, so you could compare this to, I guess, a Luma mat. And there is a second way of doing things, uh, which is drawing yourself a rotoscoping path. Um, and we'll look at both options and see how they work differently. So for the radial, uh, again, I'm going to hit tab, and what I'm going to do is type radial. There we go. And you won't see anything showed up, again, because we have our viewer connected to our node. So, again, we can connect this up or hit one as you'd like. Um, and we can have a look at our radial node. So, I know my project is 1900, uh, 1920 by 1200. So, I can make this radial node, for example, 1920 by 1200. But as you'll see, if we set the bottom to zero and zero, um, we don't really get a nice round shape. So we're gonna have to set this to maybe a larger square size uh, in order to get a perfectly circular radial, uh, seeing that our planet is, you know, when we can, when we would um, kind of draw this out further, it would be a perfect circle. So we'd like to have a perfect radial gradient to have the fall off look kind of natural. So again, hitting one uh, for the radial, Let's make this maybe 2048 by 2048. And what you'll see now is that it is a nice square, but it's getting cut off by the fact that our project is set to 1920 by 1200. So with this radial selected, um, what we're going to do is looking at all the different things, uh, we can change you know, colors if we want to. We can hit the color tab here and change it from... Uh, 
you know, black to white, or we can use different colors if we want to, but I'm going to leave it black and white for now, because all we really want is for this white part uh, to be used as a mask and kind of gradually fall off um, towards its edge and kind of, I guess, hide the inside of the planet, which isn't lit. So what we're going to do is, if we go back to our grade node over here, uh, if we get this mask tab and connect our radial with it, what we're going to see now is if we start bringing this down, you'll see that our gradient, uh, sorry, our gradient, our radial gradient is affecting um, the the color correction. But as we knew before, so switching again over uh, with one, it's in the middle of the image. Um, and that's the great thing with having all these controls open. Let's see, I, cl uh, I close all of them by hitting X. What you'll get is that I have this color correction now, but I, I kind of want to be able to move the radial gradient and color correct at the same time. So if you empty this out with the X, what you can do is double click these two and you'll have the controls for both. And whatever is active in this properties panel will actually also be uh, active in your viewer. So I can see my controls for my radial gradient as well. So I can maybe move this down and let's say the planet's center would be about here. Maybe bring this out a little bit. Uh, if you hit control, you can bring it out from the center. There we go. And we can make this bit like a little darker. Maybe that's a little big again, so make it a little smaller. There we go. And if we bring the softness down, so I'll show you what happens. If we bring the softness down a little bit, our edge will get a little harder, um, and that will will get the fall off that we're looking for. So moving the gradient down again. There we go. We can really get this like crescent type look almost. So you can kind of go whatever way you want to go with this. Maybe look at this, make it look kind of cool. There we are. So that's one way of doing things. All right, that looks all right. It's not perfect, but for the, um, I guess, for what we're doing, this is a good way of getting used to it. Oh, I accidentally moved these two. So this is what I, what happened. I was accidentally holding shift, so things got a little weird. So what I'm going to do is just reconnect the viewer, move this back out, and we're back where we were. Um, so this is one way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is disconnect this mask so we know this radial is working as a mask. Um, the other thing we can do is draw a shape. So I'm going to close these controls. Actually, I'm going to hide everything, hit the grade again, double click it so we only have the grade. Uh, and again, with this grade, it's still the multiply is still set to zero, so that's why we're not seeing anything. So I'm going to set this back to one um, just so we can see what's going on. Uh, a second way of making a mask would be with a roto node. So the roto node is found in the, let me think here, in this draw, I guess, I think it's draw. Yeah, all right, I remember that one. Um, so what the roto node basically is, it's a way to draw a 2D spline in your image. So when you create one, um, you'll see a little uh, control is added here for creating points. So this is just a Bezier spline like you would have in Photoshop or Illustrator um, or even like masks in After Effects. So you can just start drawing. So if we go into, um, you've either got the add points, which is adding points to a existing shape, or if you hit the uh, Bezier, which is on by default, you can actually start drawing a path of where you'd like to use this uh, where you'd like where you'd like to have a mask for your grade so what you'll notice as well is that you can still move these around um, I believe it's control to add your bezier points and is it... there we go so we want this to be a little more a little more rounded again this isn't perfect uh, if I was doing this in production or whatever I would Get, put a little more time into it, but it's nice to know that a roto node is there. Again, we're going to use this as a mask for our um, for our grade. So let's see what happens when we bring down our multiply. We see that it's actually affecting uh, the right place, but we'd like to feather this out a little bit. So what we can do is if we double click the roto node, <clears throat> excuse me, 
we can feather this out. Uh, and again, because uh, we're not limited by what's in the spinner, we could maybe make the feather 500 pixels, maybe even more if we wanted to, and move our rotor node, and we'll see the same thing happening uh, as we did before. There we are. What you'll notice as well is this little line, and if you click and drag, you'll actually dynamically be able to set the feather of each point, um, which is a very, very nice way of working. So let's see if we pull this out a little bit, pull this out a little bit. We can really start to shape um, our mask very quickly if we want to. And again, this is very quick and dirty, but it works, you know. And I guess that's what we're after in the end. So this is one way of doing it with the roto node. Again, we can change our Bezier curves to be a little more rounded, make it look a little more natural. Adjust this feather as well, maybe. And there we are. So um, if you want to get rid of all these controls, again, you can just close the roto node here and you'll get the same result. So that's just two ways of doing wrap masks really quickly. Um, you'll also see that if you double click the grade node, you'll see that you can choose which channel you're taking from. So in our case, we're just going to leave it to alpha because the roto node, all it's doing really is creating an alpha channel um, and piping that into the mask. With default settings, it'll work just fine. So maybe that's a little dark. Uh, maybe we'll just leave it the way it is. All right, there we go. So close these two. Um, and we have kind of a final result we can look at. Now, this is just very, very basic. Uh, other things I'd like to do is maybe bring in another grade after uh, and kind of mess with the gamma and the multiply. Uh, to kind of bring in a little bit of more, a little bit more contrast. So, using I guess the same technique as we did with the radial uh, before, we can do the same thing. Let's say we want to bring in this little vignette, which is something you know, which is used often as well. I'll add a radial, and there's two ways of doing this. Um, I guess the easiest way would be. Let's see, let's set this back to 1920 by 1200, zero and zero. And seeing that we do have white to black, uh, what we could do is just merge this radial in. So if we go back and hit one again to see our final result. So hit the M key. This is our background, because uh, this is our final, final comp. Uh, and we're gonna add in the radial, bring this in there, and we'll see what happens is rather than merging it over, if we set this to multiply, uh, all the white in our image will be uh, transparent and everything that's darker will actually uh, get overlaid and darken everything else. So with that radial selected, we can again kind of move it out a little bit, kind of a little vignette going. Uh, and this is a really, really great shortcut as well. If you hit a node and hit the D key, you'll actually um, disable that node. So you'll see once the uh, lines are crossing it, the node isn't actually working anymore. So hitting the D key again activate, reactivates it. So you can get a, a really quick before and after, or, you know, is it working, is it not working? Maybe it's a bit much. Again, that's fine, um, because in our multiply controls, and this is something we haven't talked about, is we can set how hard we mix it. So this would be comparable to the transparency of the um, of the overall layer uh, you're bringing in on top. So opacity or transparency, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what the mix does as well. So maybe bring it in just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. It's not really that visible on a scene like this as well. So just leave it very basic. Um, then one last thing I'd like to do is kind of make maybe uh, add in a glow. So uh, in Nuke itself, you have a really, really nice glow node. That isn't uh, in Natron yet, so it's a little bit of a workaround, but it gives you a nice idea of how things work as well. So what we're going to do, and this is kind of the power of um, node-based compositing, what we're going to do is bring in a blur node, wherever that went. Blur. There we are. And um, pipe in 
to the source, uh, our final comp. So if we just hit one, we can see that uh, we're just getting the same thing, but we're not blurring anything. So what we can do is just blur the ever living crap out of this. Again, let's go to maybe like 200. So I add like a nice, very large, soft glow. But the thing is, um, if we start messing with the mix here, again, we can see that the blur is there, but we we don't really want the um, we don't really want the blur affecting the color. So the mix is kind of like saying somewhere half and half in between uh, the original image. So let's say this is 0 0.5. So what we're seeing is half the blurred image and half the original image. But we don't really get any options into how we'd like to add this blur. And seeing that it's a glow, I'd like to add this on top as well. And this is where node-based compositing is really nice, where you'd have to go into After Effects and then pre-comp all of this, duplicate the pre-comp, blur it out, and then add into each other. What you can do is, okay, so I'm getting this output. I'm piping this into the blur. And let's say uh, all I want to do is just have this blurred image, and I want to merge it back into our original. So what we can do, again, is set our original to the to be the back uh, the background image, hit one again to see our final result. And then if I take the A into blur, um, what you'll see that it's it's coming in, but the operation is still set to over, so we're getting kind of an odd result. If we set this back to plus, we're actually getting the blur um, added in correctly. So we have more control uh, without having to pre-comp everything. We can do whatever we want with this blur and kind of add it in a very, very soft way. Um, maybe just a little bit. Let's kind of add it in. There we go. Something like that. Maybe make it even bigger. Just go all over. Just go completely overboard. Give it a second to calculate. And you'll see what's happening is we're getting that blur separated out. And um, we don't have to pre-comp. We just have access to everything that's in our entire chain and can pull out whatever we want. Uh, and I guess that's the, the power of node-based compositing. That's what makes it uh, working with it so fun, I find personally. Um, Again, it's, I guess it's not for everybody, but um, I guess it's a good good introduction to how little things work. So one last little thing which I'm going to talk about as well is, let's say you've got all these crazy nodes. Um, I've got this whole network of different things. Let's say I want the blur uh, only really to affect, um, I guess, the lighter parts. So now it's just it's just blurring everything, and we're adding in the, the dark and light parts. Um, Let's say I want to grade this afterwards. Maybe gamma this down so it's only really the lighter parts that get a glow. Um, and you know, let's say we have a bunch of nodes all over the place, but we want to organize them a little bit. Um, what you can do as well is, uh, let's say you've got all this running out, but you want to have pipes that aren't crossing or whatever. This isn't the best example, but it's just a little shortcut that I want to show you as well. If you hold down Control. Um, I'm afraid the key casting software, oh, only when I let go, um, but I'm actually holding it down. If you hold it down the node graph, you'll see that all these little yellow dots appear um, between all the different nodes, uh, between in the middle of every single pipe, excuse me. Uh, and what you can do is if you click and drag one of these, you'll actually create what is called a dot node. And this node, you can see, um, you can put some some info or label maybe in there. Uh, really. So put that in there. This node is really handy or whatever. When people double click it, they can see the node. But you'll see what it really is uh, for is to kind of um, organize everything. So this is still a fairly simple node graph. Uh, if it's the first time you're looking at node-based compositing and you're like, Jesus Christ, this looks way too complicated for me to ever learn, it might seem daunting at first, but it's actually fairly easy um, once you get uh, a good grasp of things. So it's, it's a lot of fun to use. It takes a little practice, but uh, there's already a lot of great resources as well on node-based compositing and switching from After Effects to node-based compositing. So I'm definitely not the only video you you can look up. Um, there's a lot more on it. And uh, I really encourage people to have a look at this because uh, it is, like I said, Natrin is free and um, it works really well. So the dot node, just to kind of finalize this uh, before I move on, dot node is this made to organize things. So uh, you could do 
you know, whatever you want. Now, in this example, I've also, uh, I've rendered all my passes in a uh, separate file. You can have multi-channel EXRs, um, and then you can choose from the different channels in here uh, which channel you want to populate within uh, the read node. The reason I render it to separate uh, separate images is because I find it to be a little faster in a lot of cases, um, especially on network drives. But again, it's just workflow, uh, so it's in there as well. There's support for that as well. So I guess the last thing I wanted to show you guys uh, is you made this beautiful composition. Now, how the hell do we render it out? Because there's not really... We have render here, but it says either render all writers or render selected writers. So again, uh, same kind of workflow as bringing these out, uh, bringing these in with a node. We're going to write this out with a node. So what we're going to do is go back to our first one here, and we see we have a write node. Uh, again, we see the W key shortcut next to it. So I'm going to hit W, and it's going to bring up my sequence window. So this is where we're going to say um, where we're going to render the final result. So uh, let's say I'm going to call this Earth final. Uh, and this is also where you're going to say what kind of image you want. So I'm going to render this to a PNG because um, we don't really need an EXR as a final output. And one thing to note is it's kind of good practice to not put your write in between your last note and your viewer. Kind of keep it off to the side. Um, I've noticed I can mess with things sometimes. Uh, and let's have a look. So we've got our earthfinal.png. Uh, I'm going to set this quality to 100 as well. Um, we've got our input color space, which is linear. Yes, because we're working with EXRs. The file color, color space is sRGB, that's normal for a 8-bit uh, image like a PNG or a JPEG or something like that. Um, and we have our bit depth, which we're going to leave to automatic, and we're going to hit render. So this is going to bring all our nodes together. It's going to render that. Give it one second. It should finish any second now. There we go. The render ended successfully. So going back to our folder, you'll see that there's something really, really crazy going on here. So, okay, never mind. I want to put that full screen, but that wasn't going to work. So we see that our PNG file is all crazy and messed up. The reason for that is we've just kind of been compositing away right now. And um, what has happened is that in the background, our alpha channels, if we have a look at them, are kind of uh, weird. Like, if you look at the fact that our stars aren't actually um, uh, completely white in the alpha channel, which means they won't be output, and we're getting re weird results, so we're just going to get the planet and some weird glow. And if we do look at it, um, this is exactly what we're getting. The stars aren't really showing up. We get this planet in really messed up colors. Um, and that's because through the compositing process, we haven't really... Uh, told Natron what our alpha channel is going to be, especially towards the end. So a really quick little trick for this uh, is using a, a last node. So I'm going to disconnect this right for one second. Uh, a last node, which can be found in uh, its own little category, which is called channel, uh, is the shuffle node. And the shuffle node, uh, I'm going to do it through the tab key again. Uh, what this does is it allows you to set different... Um, I guess different channels, uh, kind of, I guess like a channel mixer uh, is the best way to do it if you're coming from After Effects. Um, and if you look at it, what we're doing is we're setting output uh, R, G, and B. And rather than having this alpha channel being, um, I guess, uh, calculated on its own, we're going to set this to one. So what happens now is we're just telling Natron, okay, everything that's in the image, because this is a final render, it's a final image, I just want to reset my alpha and uh, make it completely white. So if we go back to RGB, nothing has changed on our final image, but if we do actually hit render again now, and give it one second to calculate out, if we go back to our image, we'll see that we get a final image which looks correct. Um, now. You know, it's not a beauty contest, so we're not going for the most amazing end result, but it looks okay. And um, I guess that's it for this tutorial. I'll zip all of these files um, so you can have a look at them and hopefully um, 
maybe even follow along uh, or, you know, you don't have to rewatch the whole thing if you've just watched it. I mean, God knows I wouldn't want to do that to you. But um, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, I enjoyed making this as usual. And um, if you have any questions, hit me up on my blog or YouTube or wherever you found this video. I try to keep a lot of channels that if things like this get posted in different places, I try to kind of keep an eye on it, but it doesn't always, you know, I can't keep an eye on every single one. Um, so my apologies if you do have a question and I do miss it. Uh, I'll try and find out uh, where everybody's posting things. So um, I guess it's me signing off. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.